Let's get all those carrots canned up for some good warm winter meals. Welcome back to Sweet Bailey Acres. It has been very busy canning around here and freezing and preserving our food. But today, I have been working on canning 50 pounds of carrots. So, and I still have a lot to go. <laughs> so let's do this together. Welcome to Sweet Bailey Acres if you've never been to the channel before. Um, so wonderful to have you. And I just love to have you subscribe and, and see more of our videos. So, but let's go ahead and get started with doing some canning of those carrots. So first, what I do is I have some jars in the canner, and they're just getting warm, okay? Because we want our jars to be warm when we're canning them. And I only fill them up about, oh, I don't know, a half maybe way of water. And then I can use that water as I'm also um, packing my jars. So we're gonna get our canning tongs. And I'm gonna take a jar out, and you'll see it's got about half, maybe a little more of water. I can always dump some of that water out. Okay, so let me move you over here. And when I'm doing our canning, I like to put a teaspoon of salt, and I use pink Himalayan salt with, well, with everything. And so I just put a teaspoon in there of salt, and then I'm doing what's called a cold packing method where I am then taking my carrots and I am packing my jar full of carrots. If you need to dump out some of the water, do. Um, honestly, I probably have a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump a little bit of that water out. I can always add more water back in. Um, I can always add a little bit more salt too. So. Okay, so when you're canning carrots, you want to make sure that you have one inch of headspace. So we're gonna go through and I'm just gonna kind of move them around, get some of the bubbles out. I'm gonna add some more water because I did dump out quite a bit. And probably add a few more carrots too in there. All right. And I just like to use some hot water from a little kettle. It makes it easy, quick, easy for me to get that water to a boiling, to a hot, hot water. And I can add it in real easy. Okay, so just go through, bubble, debubbleize your jar again. Okay, make sure everything's kind of down in the water. And you want to check to make sure you have an inch of headspace. Okay, I can add just a smidge more water. If you've not checked out the canning series with the canning 101, 102, 103, um, canning 104 talks about pressure canning. Canning 105 shows you how to can green beans. So check those out, especially if you're new to pressure canning, because that'll give you kind of an idea of why we pressure can and, and why um, it's important that you pressure can for certain types of, of vegetables. Okay, so work on getting those bubbles back out. Check the headspace. Remember, we want one inch of headspace. All right, and we are add an inch. So as you'll see from my canning videos from Canning 101, this is one inch, uh, three fourths inch, a half an inch, one fourth inch, and then you want this to be touching the water. So this step, this step, this step, and this step will sit on the edge of your jar. So when I'm doing one inch, I have the basically this sitting on the jar right there. Okay. And you want this touching the top of the water. And that's where we're at. So then the next step is to take, um, this is a wet paper towel. Sometimes I use a wet wash rag. You wanna make sure it's clean because you wanna try and get anything off the edge of your jar that may be on there that could cause your lid not to seal. So it's really important that you take a nice clean rag and wipe that off. And then I like to still put my lids in hot water. And so I take my lid out, put it on with my magnetic wand. Take my band, twist it on finger tight, and then I put it right back in the canner, and then I get the next one. Okay, let's do another one. I'm gonna take my jar out. 
I'm going to dump out just a little bit of water before I put the salt in. And salt's not required. Um, I just like to help it and put it in there. It just makes it taste good for us. I try not to do too many spices when I'm when I'm canning because I like things to be in the natural state as much as possible. Um, it just makes it easier for more diverse meals. So I try not to add anything if I don't, and maybe salt. Sometimes I'll add sugar to things, but I try not to add a lot of seasonings because you really do want your meals to be a variety, not just eating the same tastes all the time. So, okay, so now let's put our carrots back in again. As you can see on the counter here, I've been busy with peaches and carrots and freezing and <laughs> canning. It has been one busy week. All right, let me get all these down in there. And the family's been such a huge help with this. Oh my goodness, because there's been so much to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and de-bubbleize. And I go down in the middle, I go around all the edges, because um, you really want to get out as many air bubbles as you can, because those air bubbles can cause your food to spoil, it can cause it to turn colors and just not preserve as well. Um, it can also cause you to have issues with overflowing during canning or not sealing properly, so really make sure you get out as many bubbles as you can. So you'll see me doing it quite a bit. Okay, I am not quite to um, an inch of headspace, so I'm going to add some more water. I'm going to go ahead and check that. And I'm right there. So, very good. Yep, right at an inch. So now we're going to take our clean rag. Sometimes I'll reposition it and just kind of move it to another area because just in case there was some on the last jar, especially when you're working with jams and jellies, you want to make sure you get as much off as you can because you don't want to then rub it on the next jar and then have that sticky on there and then your, your lid not seal. So I always try and reposition my rag. Okay, wipe everything off. Our magnetic wand. Take our lid out of the hot water. Put it on. And put our band on. Okay, so before I did all this, my jars were sitting in the, um, the pressure canner and just kind of on a simmer just to keep them nice and hot. And it just makes things less likely for your jars to break when they're processing that way they don't get go from cold to hot too quickly um, so it is best to try and start with those hot hot jars okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through i'm going to finish canning up the rest of these seven uh, see i got five left and we'll come back here and then i'll show you how to set the pressure canner and then some time will go by and i'll show you how to take them back out so um, i'll see you then on so my first jar i did salt my second jar, I did not. So it's not a requirement. But <laughs> I did have to open it back up and add salt because we like salt and then re-put everything back on. Um, so just so in case you noticed that, that I didn't put salt in the second one, I did go back in and add that salt. Um, on my third one here, I also want to go over with you guys. It's not always a bad idea to go ahead and fill this up as much as you can and then dump some of the water out if you need to and then add your salt last. And then that way, if you do happen to have too much water, um, you don't have to worry about dumping out some of that salt. So just a tip, it might be better beneficial to just add the salt in last. Okay, I'll, I'm taking the last one out of the can here. I'm gonna fill it up. Okay, now let's talk about some of the prep work that we did before the canning. So taking the carrots, so the 50 pounds of carrots that we had, my husband uh, was very, very helpful. I washed and chopped up all the carrots and he peeled every single carrot for me. Uh, so extremely helpful. And then we put them in water and I didn't use citric acid this time, just plain water um, and put them into the, the refrigerator. And it filled up our entire second refrigerator with all these different containers with all these 50 pounds of carrots. So if you're not doing it the same day, just chop them up because that is a lot of work. I mean, to can all of them in one day, it's, it's just, and that'd be a very, very, very long day, especially if you were doing all the prep work before as well. Um, so we put them in the refrigerator and, um, and then I just pulled them out and rinsed them off and before I then now put them into the jars. 
That'll just help them to last a little bit longer before you start doing the canning. Okay, so this last jar, we've taken the jar, the hot jar, out of the canner. Put in, had a little bit of water in the bottom, debubbleizing. Okay, I can add some more, it looks like. And I made some of these. Um, some of these circles were really big because these were really big carrots. And then some of them I chopped them up into smaller little triangles so that way I can try and fit more into the jars. So it really doesn't matter. They're all going down the same way, right? So I just, and they all taste the same. So I just do a variety until I can see that it's at, you know, kind of a half an inch. Um, I'll need to add a little bit more water. I'm going to go ahead and add my teaspoon of salt on the top here. Just kind of move it around. It, it dissolves in the water really quickly, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of, just a smidge more of water. Okay, good. We're there. So you're at that one inch of head space. Okay. So then wipe down our last jar. Put our lid on. Put our band on. And then we're going to move it to the pressure canner. Okay. So here's the pressure canner. I had had it on, but I turned it off while I was doing this. Um, so we're going to put the lid on. Sometimes these lids are a little tricky. Oh, that's because I got the wrong side on. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, you're going to put the lid on. There we go. And you're going to twist it in place. I'm going to turn my heat back up. And we're going to let this get to where it starts to steam. Okay? So when it starts to steam, we'll come back and I'll set a timer with y'all. It is time to move on to the next part. Okay, you can see that the pressure lock has popped up. So we've definitely got a lot of pressure going on in here. And the steam, you can see kind of coming up. Hopefully you can see it coming up. It's definitely coming really strong. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set our timer for 10 minutes. Because we want to allow this steam to vent for 10 minutes before we add the weight, before you add the weight for your um, elevation. So in my, for my elevation, it is 10 pounds of pressure. So after this has vented like this 10 minutes, we'll come back, we'll add that 10 pounds of pressure, and then we're gonna set the timer for 30 minutes because we want, these are quart-sized jars with carrots, we want them to process for 30 minutes. So I'll see you back when we get to that. Our canner has been uh, steaming for 10 minutes, so what we're going to do now is just go ahead and add on our weight. And so I have one ring on here because that is what the 10 pounds of pressure is. If you need 15 pounds of pressure, you have to add that second ring because each one of these rings adds 5 pounds of pressure. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it on the top. And once this, this little weight here starts rocking, that's when I'm going to set my timer for the 30 minutes. But I'm not going to do it until that's really good, consistently rocking. So that will be our next step. Our canner is making some noise. You can see the weight just bobbling back and forth. So at this point, what we need to do is go ahead and set our timer for 30 minutes. Once it has processed for 30 minutes, then what you're going to do is you're going to turn off the heat and you're going to um, let it depressurize. And depressurizing can take quite a while. Um, with quart size, it takes about 45 to 50 minutes. If you were doing pint size jars, it would take about 30, 35 minutes. Um, so once this has processed 30 minutes, you're then just gonna let it sit, and you're gonna let it sit, and you're gonna let it sit. Do not mess with it. You're gonna wait for your indicator, your pressure indicator to pop down. At that point, what I do is I will then uh, still let my canner sit for uh, a little bit. I will go ahead and remove the weight and I'll let it kind of sit for another five minutes just, just to make sure all the pressure's out. I don't ever want to risk breaking any jars and so I, I stay more a little bit more on the cautious side and I give it that little extra time and that's okay. Um, but actually at that point you could go ahead and just take the lid off if you didn't want to give that extra little bit of time after you take the weight off. Um, that's just what I do. So then at that point, then what you can do is you can remove your jars and you're gonna remove your jars and you're gonna make sure that they sit 
for 12 to 24 hours. I really like to let my jars sit for as close to 24 hours as I can. If it's been 12, 13, 14 hours and they've got, every, all of them have sealed and none of them look like they have a little bubble on top, then I will go ahead and um, take, them, take the bands off and store them. But you really wanna make sure that you don't move them. Once you take them out of this canner, you wanna make sure that when you put them on the, the counter on a towel, because you wanna make sure there's not that cold surface there, that you really let them sit. Do not come in and move them around. Um, so tip, very important. Then once you've removed the bands, I label them. I usually put what they are and the, the date that I, that I processed them. Um, and then I will store them in the pantry. I think that's about it. Less than one minute left and it is really loud in here. So if you have never pressed your can, know that it's gonna be really loud in your kitchen. Um, so we got 21 seconds left and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the timer and I'm gonna turn off the heat. Okay, just let it rest, let it be. Remember, it'll take a good 45 to 50 minutes. Sometimes what I do is I go ahead and set a timer for 45 to 50 minutes, just so that way, while I'm getting everything else prepared for another round of carrots or vegetables that I'm doing, I know kind of how much longer I have until this is gonna depressurize. And it just really helps to keep me on track and so that way I'm getting things done. And I can also work on other things around the house or maybe play with my kiddo and, and do a fun game with my husband and kiddo while we're waiting for this to depressurize. And you'll see as I'm talking, it's still kind of loud with the um, bobbling back and forth, but it'll quickly start to quiet down and it will be quiet as it's depressurizing. Um, but just remember to let it really go through that full 45, 50 minutes until this pops down. Um, so the pressure indicator goes down. So, and that's it. And then we're gonna remove the jars. Okay, so I will also come back and show you how to remove those jars. It is time to take those jars out of the canner. Okay, so I have already removed the weight. I've already let it sit for five minutes. You can see that the pressure indicator has already dropped. So what I'm gonna do at this time is go ahead and remove the lid. And you wanna make sure that when you're opening it, you open it with the lid, inside lid, facing away from you. That way it keeps some of the steam from coming up and hitting you in the face. So I'm gonna put this over on the counter and we're gonna use our tongs. And we're just gonna take those jars right out and we're gonna place them on a towel to make sure that it's not hot on cold and risk your jars breaking from that temperature change. Oh, look, oops, look at those. Don't they look so yummy? Lots of carrots. Okay, so you'll notice since they were cold packed, they're gonna float more than they would if they were um, hot packed, uh, just because of, there's more oxygenation inside of the, the carrots and you can't pack them as tightly as you could if they were hot packed. Um, same as like what we did with the green beans. So if you, if you heat them first, make them hot packed, um, you can put more in the jars. But as these cool off, they will start to settle back down to the bottom. They won't stay up high. And these ones aren't that bad, that high. They look really good. Okay, we're just gonna wait for them to make that beautiful tink, tink, tink noise that every canner loves, because I know I do. It's funny, around our house, we actually get excited and we're like, oh, another one, oh, another one, and counting them, so anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please like and share um, our videos and subscribe um, so that way you can always get the newest video out as quick as possible uh, to you. So here at Sweet Bailey Acres, we really appreciate everything that you do and all your subscribing and sharing and, and we just ask that you please just have a wonderful and blessed day.